Acidity of the alpha hydrogen is going to be the topic in this first lesson on a chapter called Substitution Reactions at the Alpha Carbon. Uh, now, a lot of books will call this enols and enolates, and we'll find out that those are the most common nucleophiles we're going to encounter in re these substitution reactions at the alpha carbon. Now, to make it real clear here, so we're going to be dealing with carbonyl containing compounds like ketones and aldehydes, maybe esters. Uh, and your carbonyl does not get a Greek letter, but each adjacent carbon is called the alpha carbon or an alpha carbon. And then further away, you just keep counting on the Greek letters. This would be a beta carbon. And if we had more, we'd then have a, a gamma carbon, a delta carbon, an epsilon carbon, so on and so forth. And particular importance in this chapter is that alpha carbon. And we'll find out that those alpha hydrons are going to be uh, particularly acidic in comparison to the rest anyways, uh, because the conjugate base anion is going to be resonant stabilized with the oxygen. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you wanna be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do here is take a look at uh, deprotonation with hydroxide. We'll find out that hydroxide's not the, really the best base for deprotonating one of these alpha hydrons. So we've got two different alpha carbons and so there's two different places we can, in theory, deprotonate and we'll talk about their re relative stabilities and the relative likelihoods and relative acidities and stuff like this. And uh, So in this case we're going to come and deprotonate this one first. So and in this case we're going to form a corresponding carbanion. And this carbanion is going to be resonant stabilized. We're exactly one bond away from pi electrons. So we can draw an additional resonant structure here. Cool. And if you examine these two different resonance structures here, so you'll find out that putting the negative charge on the oxygen is far more stable than putting it on the carbon. And so this one on the right here is the major resonance contributor. And that's kind of where this guy's going to get his name. So if you recall from back in the alkyne chapter, we talked about something looking like this. And this guy here will have some significance in this chapter as well. It's called an enol, where from the same carbon, you have both an alkene and an alcohol, an enol. So that's kind of how that works. And so this guy, if you look, it looks like we just deprotonated that H. Now, that's not how we got there. We actually got there by deprotonating the alpha carbon. So, but we still form the same structure. And so this looks like it's just the conjugate base of an enol, which in some way it is. Uh, and so we just call it an enolate. Pretty common to just add the eight for the conjugate base on things. So like nitric acid HNO3, its conjugate base is the nitrate ion, NO3 minus. So same kind of thing there. So, and that this lovely resonant stabilized species here is an enolate. And, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, so a lot of uh, textbooks will actually call this chapter enols and enolates because we'll find out that enols and enolates are the most common nucleophiles in the reactions we're going to study here. So cool, but this thing is called an enolate and it's simply the conjugate base uh, of a carbonyl containing compound when you deprotonate that alpha carbon. All right, now the other place we could have deprotonated here would have been on the other alpha carbon and I want to show you the difference here. And once again, we're going to form a resonant stabilized anion. Cool, and again, he's one bond away from pi electrons, so we should definitely expect resonance. Cool, and once again, we form another enolate. And again, you shouldn't just think of this one resonant structure, the enolate. Again, the real structure is something uh, represented by the combination of the resonance structures, the resonance hybrid, and that's what the enolate is, but it definitely gets its name from the major resonance contributor. Now, if you look at these, if you wanna compare these two different enolates, you should really be comparing these two different major resonance contributors, the negative charge and the oxygen. And the real big difference between the two is how substituted the pi electrons are. And we learned earlier that the more substituted alkene is the more stable. And so the top one is actually the more stable enolate. The, the bottom one is the less stable one. So if we take a look at this, the more stable one here, you guys might recall, we refer to as the thermodynamic. We talk about thermodynamic products as a more stable product. Well, these aren't necessarily going to be a product 
we'll find out that these are probably going to be intermediates along the way and other reactions acting as nucleophiles. But in this case, the top one would be the thermodynamic enolate. So, but the bottom one we get by deprotonating the more accessible carbon out of the two, the more accessible alpha carbon. And so it's going to actually form faster as a result. And so this would be the kinetic enolate. So we'll find out that uh, if you use a bulky base at low temperatures, and we have a special bulky base we use in this chapter, that often you can get this kinetic enolate to form over the thermodynamic one, preferentially. So that'll be something we kind of take a focus on. So, but let's, now that we've kind of defined these two different enolates, let's take a look at comparing some, uh, some relative functional groups. We'll compare aldehydes, ketones, esters, and then a special diketone as well into the mix. All right, so now we want to compare the acidity of the alpha hydrogen to four different functional groups, aldehydes, ketones, esters, and then beta diketones here. Uh, find out if we deprotonate one of these alpha hydrogens here. So on an aldehyde, we'll once again form an enolate. So, and for that aldehyde, it's pKa is right around 15. Now, if you notice, if we're using hydroxide as the base, when hydroxide pulls off that H, it's gonna form water on the product side. And the pKa of water is right close to 15 as well. And as a result, you really will get a fair amount, like a 50-50 mixture here of reactants and products. So you probably have, you know, half your aldehyde left over and then half it's converted into enolate, so on and so forth. Now, we'll find out with a ketone here, if we wanna deprotonate that alpha carbon here. So, well, unfortunately the pKa is now approximately 20 for the average ketone. And so as a result, with water again having a pK of 15, now the, the weaker acid is the ketone on the reactant side. And so you're not gonna get a whole lot of your, your ketone molecules actually forming enolates. So it heavily favors the reactant side. And with now an ester, we'll find out it's even more so. If I wanna deprotonate one of these alpha hydrogens on an ester, well now my pKa is approximately 25. And so even further gonna shift the equilibrium towards the reactant. It's not gonna form a lot of enolate and water at all. All right, finally, we're gonna take a look at this beta diketone last, but he's special. So I'm gonna save him for the end in just a little bit. Now, how do we explain this trend between aldehydes, ketones, and esters? Well, if you might recall, in, in a couple chapters ago, we talked about nucleophilic addition to ketones and aldehydes, and we said aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. And the way we justified this is we looked at carbon uh, alkyl groups here as electron donating. And so they decrease the amount of partial positive charge on that carbonyl carbon, making it a weaker electrophile. Whereas an aldehyde has one alkyl group and then one hydrogen. And a hydrogen is not electron donating or electron withdrawing, it's nothing. And so with one fewer electron donating groups, this carbonyl would have more partial positive charge than the one on the ketone, making the one with the aldehyde a more uh, reactive electrophile. Well, not only in this case is it going to make it a better electrophile, it's also going to make it a better acid. And we're really going to focus on the conjugate base over here. So compare the ketone and aldehyde enolates here, and we'll focus on this resonant structure, but it applies to the entire thing, but it'll be easier, I think, to see here. Uh, and in this case here, we've got an anion in this case, and having that extra donating group versus a hydrogen, that donating group is gonna destabilize the anion. He's electron rich, and this carbon's like, I'm giving electrons away, so I'm electron donating, and it's gonna destabilize that anion relative to the uh, enolate of the aldehyde, and that's what's going on here. So for the same reason we saw that aldehydes were more reactive than ketones in nucleophilic addition, aldehydes are also more acidic at the alpha carbon than ketones as well. Well, aldehydes and ketones, it turns out, are even better electrophiles than esters. So there's even less partial positive charge uh, on this carbon here because the alkoxy group over here is electron donating even more so. Now we've got a strong electron donating group. An alkyl group we learned is just a weak electron donating group, but uh, an oxygen with lone pairs, that's a strong electron donating group. And it decreases the amount of partial positive charge on that carbon, making it an even weaker electrophile. But it also being an even stronger donating group destabilizes this anion, making it an even stronger base. And if he's a stronger conjugate base, then he comes from an even weaker conjugate acid. So and finally, we'll look at this beta diketone here. And this beta diketone turns out is going to have a pKa of approximately 9. And comparing that to the pKa of water, which is formed as the other product on this side, that actually is now an even stronger acid. Water is now the weaker acid, which would be the other product in this reaction. So the equilibrium is now going to shift heavily towards the products. And so essentially, this goes almost to completion with hydroxide. And so normally, if you want to deprotonate an alpha carbon, hydroxide is not the best choice unless you have what's called a beta diketone. So where you have two ketones, or at least two carbonyls, beta to each other. So alpha, beta, 
alpha, beta, they both think they're beta to each other. And the idea is that when you form your conjugate base enolate here, you don't just get two resonant structures, you get three. So the negative charge is not shared between just one carbon, one oxygen, it's shared between one carbon and two oxygens. Much more stable conjugate base now, much weaker conjugate base, therefore a much stronger conjugate acid. So this is kind of some of your relative acidities for alpha carbons. So aldehydes the highest, uh, then ketones and then esters, as long as you don't have a beta dicarbonyl. But if you've got a beta dicarbonyl, that's going to be more acidic than just your standard aldehyde ketone or ester altogether. Cool. If you want to, again, deprotonate one of these lovely beta dicarbonyls, hydroxide is sufficient. If you want to deprotonate anything else to completion, hydroxide will not be sufficient. And we're going to learn our new favorite strong base for the chapter. So now we're going to visit our new favorite strong base. And our new favorite strong base here is called lithium diisopropyl amide, or LDA for short. Here's our new favorite strong base. And so first off, we've got a negative charge on nitrogen here. We saw like NaNH2 was a super strong base back in the alkyne chapter. Well, he's comparable in strength to NaNH2, but he's also got the advantage of being bulky, which is going to be convenient in this chapter, as we'll see. Now, I want to go back and revisit what happens if we use hydroxide to try and deprotonate an alpha carbon. And in this case, we're going to deprotonate the more substituted alpha carbon preferentially to form the thermodynamic enolate. But again, in this case with a ketone, the equilibrium is actually going to favor the reactants. pKa here is 20. The pKa of the other acid on the other side, which would be water, would be around 15. And so it's going to heavily favor the reactants. Whereas if we use LDA now, this essentially is going to deprotonate virtually 100%. So, but if you do it at low temperatures, it actually is going to form the kinetic enolate instead. So it'll actually choose preferentially to deprotonate on the less substitute side being so bulky. So he's preferentially going to choose this alpha carbon instead. Now notice this is at low temperatures. If you did this at room temperature, truth be told, it actually is probably still going to preferentially choose the more substituted one. So however, some professors and textbooks never even present that and they just say LDA, always less substitute side. So feel out like your professor on that one, but it's probably going to be presented as LDA, less substituted side. Technically, it's LDA at low temperatures when it does that. So also note the solvent here is THF. Oftentimes, we're not just going to write this in. So the last time you saw THF used was probably with a Grignard reagent, and it's a good cyclic ether here. It's a good polar aprotic solvent. So, and like all super duper strong bases, and LDA is one of those, uh, they're not compatible with protic solvents or protic reactants or anything like that. And that's why you've got to use an aprotic solvent in this case. But most of the time, that's not going to be written as well. So uh, for many of you, rather than having this explicitly spelled out uh, as it probably properly should be, you might just see LDA and you should anticipate in all likelihood the same thing. Now, I have seen a professor once teach, you know, LDA at room temp and LDA at low temps and, and distinguish the difference, but most of you probably not going to happen. Cool. So this is our new favorite strong base. We'll find out that uh, enolates are good nucleophiles, and we're going to use them quite a bit in this chapter. Uh, and sometimes forming just a small amount of enolate in equilibrium is going to be sufficient. Sometimes that will be completely inadequate, and we'll need to use LDA in such cases to form 100% conversion to enolate instead. So we want to look at one other thing here. So we've kind of looked at uh, enolate formation, whether you use a base like hydroxide or a super strong base like LDA. Uh, we can form some of the enolate conjugate base, which it turns out is a very strong nucleophile. On the other hand, though, we're going to find out that some of the mechanisms we do here, rather than being base catalyzed, or as we'll find out, base promoted, uh, they're going to be acid catalyzed instead. And so if I put a ketone in H3O+, plus, what might we actually see? Well, in this case, we might undergo tautomerization. And back in the alkyne chapter, we learned both acid catalyzed and base catalyzed tautomerization. But in that case, it was usually about going from the enol to the more stable keto form. Well, here, we're going to start with the keto form, looking to go usually to the less stable enol form in equilibrium, forming a small amount. Uh, and so in this case, first thing we're actually going to do is protonate the carbonyl oxygen. And if you remember your keto enol tautomerization mechanism, it's just two steps. So, and you probably learned it the other way, and we're just going to go backwards and just exact reverse what you would have learned back in the past.
Cool, so there's step number one. We just protonate, and now we're gonna deprotonate. And we wanna specifically deprotonate it. If we're gonna more likely form the more substituted enol in almost every case, and actually in every case. So just like the more substituted enolate is the thermodynamic one, well, with the enolates, we have an option. We can do you know a regular base like hydroxide, or we can do LD8 low temperatures, and we can actually distinguish between thermodynamic and kinetic. But with the enol, we are always just gonna form the thermodynamic enol preferentially. All right, so in this case, we're now just gonna deprotonate on the more substituted alpha carbon here. And uh, we would have also formed some water right here. But in this case, if you have H3O plus, you definitely got some water in your solution as well, and you could draw them in as you needed. Uh, and so in this case, your other step is just simply to deprotonate here. leading you right here. And so this whole process, again, you might recall going from keto to enol here, we called tautomerization. And technically we'd form a little bit of that other enol as well. So, but definitely when you're forming enols, you definitely more substituted alkene is gonna be the thermodynamic enol, and that's probably gonna be the major one that'll be involved in the reaction you're performing. Cool, so I wanna just bring up this mechanism here because it's two steps to form the enol, and we're gonna find out that some of the acid catalyzed mechanisms we look at, the first two steps are gonna be tautomerization, and I'm not gonna draw them out again. I'm just gonna be like, this ketone turns into this enol. So, and here'd be the first two steps of that mechanism. So, but to save ourselves, uh, save ourselves some time uh, a little down the road, I just wanted to present that now. So, but big take home for this chapter, if we're doing anything base catalyzed or as we'll learn base promoted uh, is another option, your enolate is gonna be your nucleophile. If you're doing any acid catalyzed mechanism, it's gonna be an enol that is your nucleophile instead. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems involving enols and enolates and the acidity of the alpha hydrogen, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.